So for this entry, Strange, I want to focus on the idea, the um, fantasy paradox, as I've called it, or the problem with the Tolkien melting pot being a um, default. Now, I remember looking at a certain expansion in Morrowind, as well as looking at certain responses to Planescape, and how people were arguing that those games shouldn't count as fantasy because they were too weird. This is something that only really works if your idea of fantasy begins and ends with a very British approach, in a kind of sort of British way. Not to say that there's anything wrong with that, and I've enjoyed Romance of the Perilous Land, but the reason why I use the term Tolkien melting pot as a pejorative is with that particular style, it's dipping into so many different um, things that they all kind of blend together, but there's no real identity. And that kind of thing ends up making the um, particular kind of fantasy born from it a hodgepodge. And while it's the hodgepodge that can have good things, um, the fish rots from the head, as the analogy would go. When I look at something like Numenera, which is ostensibly doing fantasy, but the line between sci-fi and fantasy is so far removed from expectations that you may as well just flip a coin at that point. It's the ultimate extreme of uh, Clark's Law. And that's part of the appeal for me with it, that you can introduce just about anything into that setup. And as long as you introduce it properly, it can still work. You can have it be weird without delving into certain tropes. Because this is a setting where several civilizations have come and gone, and those are just the ones that are known of, and the ones that are known of, are barely understood by the modern folk. There's some attempts to try and understand them, but it doesn't really go anywhere. The advantage, then, is that you, ha is that you have a clean, open slate to introduce things. And I think that's, some I think that's something that is not as much of an option in quote-unquote traditional fantasy because there's the problem of expectations. This is also the reason why I don't care for the notion of using, um, say, Lord of the Rings as your basis for how you're going to portray fantasy. Because what if somebody wants to portray fantasy in a culture that's outside of that? I mean, maybe maybe if people didn't have the the um, British fr British esque fantasy approach as as they do, as their default, then may then maybe there wouldn't be such outrage over people wanting to do say Japan or India, or at the very least they would they wouldn't be able to see it as so weird when in reality it isn't. Expand your horizons, people. <laughs>